We are back with another episode of The Buzz. Follow us, Gospel Music Buzz, on all platforms. And today we have a super special episode for you. We have Andrew and Elena Mack, all the way from Berlin. I mean, guys, we are super, super excited here. We've never interviewed anyone from that side of the world. So we're super <laughs> pumped. We're super excited to get into it. Andrew and Elena, thank you guys so much for joining us today and welcome to The Buzz. Oh, thank you. We are just so honored to be here with you, Sherwin, and on Gospel Music Buzz. We're this is so exciting. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait to, to talk. This is great. So I have to say, you know, when I first got, when I first saw the email, because, you know, we all see emails all the time. When I first saw the email, I'm like, is this a phishing email? Is this a spam email? Like, what, what is, I don't think anyone knows about us from Berlin. Like, like who's, who's reaching out to us, right? So tell us that background story. So how did you guys even discover this? Because no, I'm, I'm just super curious. Well, I mean, as we were preparing to release our single, we were looking, we really, you know, wanted to do something on YouTube with someone mm -hmm. that was mainly based out of YouTube. Um, and so we came across your channel and saw the other artists that you had interviewed and we just really loved the channel and, and what you're about. And so we thought, hey, why not? Let's just, let's just write them and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome, thank you. Yeah, because I went back and I'm looking, I'm like, wow, these guys, like I loved your, your style. I love like, you know, just your overall passion for what you're doing and everything else. And I started to look, at the video and then I'm following the journey and I know the release <laughs> is coming and I'm like all tuned in I'm like trying to catch the live stream and everything <laughs> I mean it was just I was on that journey with you guys whether you knew it or not but we were there <laughs> we were on we were we were in the comments I mean we were cheering it on so you guys oh. just released your new single weatherman we're gonna get into all that surround the new single but just kind of tell us you guys are living in Berlin now so how did that occur so you you weren't burning you weren't uh, born there so tell us how did you arrive in Berlin like what's the backstory there well you're right we are from the states we're from Pennsylvania ah, and okay. um, it's really crazy because we probably just could have never imagined living mm -hmm. in Europe and um, it's really quite some story um, but maybe just to give you a little bit of an idea it was a total miracle. <laughs> it was totally God. It was um, the call. Mm. It was the great call of our life. And um, I was 12 years old mm. when we came to visit Berlin. Mm. And um, I remember Andrew and I, we were just walking around as teens um, and loving the city, just falling yeah, in love yeah. with, I mean, double decker buses, everything was like, ah, this is so exciting. <laughs> um, but deep in my heart, I knew um, that God was calling us to move um, to Germany. Mm -hmm. And um, our parents are pastors in a church, and um, it's wonderful. We, we left everything behind, but of course, um, we have family and friends and lots of really great people in, in the States who we're still connected with. And now that we're mm -hmm. over here, we have an amazing family as well. It's just grown and grown and grown. And like you were saying about now that we're connecting yeah. with you, it's just awesome to, to meet people and to yeah. connect. And then our, our passion sort of just unites as we, uh, yeah, as we connect. And, um, and so it's really exciting. And um, we're in Berlin, great, great city. 16 years we've been here. Yeah, oh. that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, so 16 years. Wow. So now yeah. in, that, in that beginning transitional phase, you know, like what we're like, you know, again, learning the language, talk to us a little bit about that. Like, you know, coming from the U.S., I'm not sure what second language you might have taken in school. I mean, most of us take Spanish. If we want to <laughs> venture off, we might take Italian, like my son is taking Italian. But in the most point, you know, we're not taking German, right? So tell us, how did, how did you guys learn the language? Like, how was that? Well, we're still learning, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think it also because we were, you know, younger in our teenage years at that time and just also excited to learn it. And for me, it was a big, big priority to learn German because I wanted to study at the university in Berlin. 
wow, because okay. it's totally free. So if you can speak German, you can study at the university for free, which is mm -hmm. really amazing. Like when I tell that to wow. American people, like come to Germany, like universities are free. What? No, I'm, just, no, I'm like, I need to learn German. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you have to learn German. So there was like a really big um, incentive to learn it. Plus, mm -hmm. we knew, you know, God brought us here yeah. permanently. Um, and so it really was about that, like knowing that you're here. We also didn't have a pressure to have to learn it on a timetable. But just being here, being around the language, you learn it. But in Berlin, there are so many languages that you can actually get by without German. And some places they will even speak English and not even speak German at all. Um, okay. So it's very international and so many different languages are, are here in the city. So now you guys currently serve in your parents' church, right? And what's, what's, right. The name of, what's the name of that church? So it's just called Berlin Church or Berlin okay. International Community Church. And I'm actually one of the pastors in the church. And my sister is also working there with the band, with the production. So we are... Awesome. fully involved in the so, ministry of the church. That's so, awesome. Ama <laughs> amazing. Come, come amazing. I, I know. But trust me, whenever I get there, I will be looking for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk, you know, church building. So you guys, you know, you go there with your parents, you venture off, you, you know, your parents get this call, you know, they figured, you know, hey, this is what we're being called to do uprooting going there so how has it been you know like starting a ministry like you know doing what you're called to do in a different city you know it's kind of like you know when you when you're reading the bible and you're seeing you know hey you know this person was called to go to this city you know leave everything behind like no how has that been as far as like planting a church and growing the ministry like you know what are some of those fulfilling moments for you along the way mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I would say that it's the people. And um, when you realize that over many years and over time that you reach this point where you meet somebody else, you kind of see it all again. And it's like, wow, like God saw that from the beginning. And, mm -hmm. um, and then you're just so happy that you are you are friends with someone and you think wow like this is so amazing and mm -hmm. oftentimes i'm just brought to tears because it's like mm -hmm. i know like this this is all part of it and so it's the yeah. people you know the people are the greatest gifts and mm -hmm. our hearts are just always overflowing with mm -hmm. joy and love and meeting the people um and and enjoying friendships and enjoying life together um and so the people but um i don't know what else can you think of I mean, I think, you know, as Christians, too, it's always important to continue to move and to move with God and what he's doing. And, you know, when we're in step with the Holy Spirit and walking with God and listening to his voice and, you know, really letting go of tradition yeah. and, and rituals and, you know, all these things that so often we like to hold on to and buildings and, you know, the carpets and the seats and all these mm -hmm. things that we can get so like worked up about and styles of music and all of that. When you just really like surrender to God, I believe that you can be effective anywhere in the world and yeah. he will help you to know, you know, how to, how to do a ministry, how to, to, to make it powerful um, in the place that you are, because it, it's God's vision. It's God's, it's God's church. And he promises that he will build his church. So it's not yes. really about us anyway. And I think when, you know, when we have that perspective, we um, we're really unstoppable. Yes. Because his church is unstoppable. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And, and I think, and that's, and that's a great, you know, that's a great segue too, right? Because when we're thinking about music and we're thinking, you know, about unstoppable, you know, if I recall correctly, you guys have a single by the name of Unstoppable, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's like, let's just, it's let's just connected. slide right yeah. into that. So it's, all, it's all connected. <laughs> so, you know, musical journey. So you're here. You're in this new, you know, in this new country, you're building, you're doing all of this. Now, at which point in between you're, you know, you guys decide, you know, hey, let's kind of, you know, pursue music, right? So you're starting it off, like, how was that? And then even connecting, because, I mean, you guys have an amazing relationship, brother, brother and sister working together amazing i mean i i like my sister i love my sister i don't know if i can work <laughs> with her every single day you know we both have strong opinions you know we probably spend too much time debating 
But you know, t- <laughs> tell us, you know, like how fulfilling is that you are getting to do this, you know, with your brother, with your sister. Now, which point did you guys decide, hey, we want to do this, and you know, starting that journey? Well, I mean, that also is really connected to the journey of our own personal life and what God has done in us as we've been involved in the church. And I wouldn't say that it was a calculated thought like, hey, let's let's start doing music and 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 try to make it big. And, you know, that wasn't really our intention. But when I was 18 years old, um, you know, I was really in a time of my life where I didn't know what to do, what to do next. What did God want to do with me? What I see my parents having this call. Yes, I love Germany. I know I'm to be here. But what does that mean for me? personally, and in a very powerful encounter with God in a large revival meeting, um, God spoke to me about worship. And for the first time in my life, I lifted my hands um, to him and he changed me from the inside out. It was so powerful. And it really was out of that, that coming back to the church then and saying, I'm here to serve. And I grew up playing classical music, classical piano. um, Mm -hmm. So that was my background. Uh, totally different now, you know, but um, that was, that's where I came from. And I just started to serve in the church and then started to write songs. And then we started to write songs together. And that was really the beginning where we just were writing songs mainly for our church. Okay. But, I just, you know, I think it's really the same that when we start just serving that way, God just lifts you up um, higher and higher. But maybe you could share about how we really then got even into it in a more serious way. Right, and and let me just add that it's also <laughs> funny to know that we have been singing and, and writing songs since we were kids. And so yeah. for me, that's one of the, the coolest things to just experience is like as, as I'm growing up and as life just continues and we get older and <laughs> we get older, that this this great gift that has always been there, which right. is like what you said, that we're called to do this as a brother and a sister. <laughs> like even when we were little, you know, we were just singing melodies and all of this. And it's so wow. cool to see how God just develops it. Right. Um, and so it's, it's so fun. And so, like you said, um, it was then at that point where we decided we wanted to really record the music and mm. all of that. And that's been so good because we do want other people to be able to hear it and also to just sense what God is doing in us in Berlin and in our church. And so we want to just share that. um, And when we all need encouragement and just to be inspired by others. And so we're really happy that we can do that and record and that we can have music out there to be listened to. Yeah. And and that's amazing, right? Because even kind of thinking back about what you said, right, as far as, you know, when you, felt that moment that, hey, this is the moment that I was called, right? That transformative moment. As you're speaking about it, like I'm even reflecting like when I felt that call. And sure, there's different times in between, you know, we might, you know, we'll have challenges, we'll come back, we'll repent, but it's just something impactful about that moment when you know that That's you right. know like, hey, this is not just me, right? Like I know I'm called towards yeah. this direction or like god is speaking to me raising your hand which is a total sign of surrender right so once right. you raise your hand and you're just saying god i'm giving up of everything and i'm just trusting you i'm trusting this call yes. i'm trusting this mission i'm trusting whatever it is that you have in place for me so as you were talking about it, like i'm even getting excited just like feeling yeah. it for you like man oh. i must have been like that moment yeah. you know like that moment of total surrender of just yeah. heading in that direction. So that's that's amazing. Uh, what about you, uh, Elena? Like, when was it that you realized, you know, hey, God, this is what I really wanted? You know, like, what was that connection, connected moment for you? Well, I've always loved to sing. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember it was right when I got off the plane and started to, to serve in our church that uh, I said, I, I like to sing. <laughs> um, and it, <laughs> really you know just like a couple people but um but I was there and I just love to sing Mm -hmm. um and so for me that's always been my heart singing is is my passion I love it so much um and so in that way I've always just known that I love to sing um but it was also other times later when I realized that it's also much more than just the singing um and there were some times when I I was sick or had sore throats and 
you know, singing, it just wasn't, wasn't going to work. I, I was <laughs> sick and I, and I just thought, Oh, you know, this is just awful. Um, but I realized that the call is so big and it's so great and we can be doing any other piece of production. We can be doing anything. We can be taping down the red carpet. We can be doing whatever. And it's so much fun and it's so beautiful. And when you are serving, you have that joy. And, yes. and of course I have that joy to sing and I know I'm called to sing and, and he's mm-hmm. healed me. That's some other stories. He's, <laughs> he's healed me in, in many Amazing. great ways. Um, but when you really just surrender, like you said, um, and you totally give your life to him to serve and you die to yourself and you say, I'm alive in you. Um, and of course I've resurrendered um, as well yeah. in my life um, because I, I asked Jesus to come into my heart when I was really, really little. Um, and, um, and I, I said, Oh, I want to get baptized when, when, you know, when are they bringing out the pool? You know, I was, I was so since I was little, but uh, over and over again, we had yeah. those times yeah. where, okay, is this just something I believe because my parents believe it? Is this, mm-hmm. and, and mm. time and time again, I have made that decision that this is what I'm living for. I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed to yeah. speak his name. We want to make him famous in this city and across the globe. And so it's so great to be able to just grow in more and more yeah. into yes. that. And I want to keep doing that. And I, <laughs> I will never give up and I'll keep on. Amazing. It's just, it's just so refreshing just to see that fire to, you know, to just know, you know, and especially to us a lot of times when we think about, you know, Christians or, you know, believers being on fire for God, right? You were thinking about, you know, you know, like the, the uncles and the aunts and the grandparents, like someone that have lived their full life, right? And I'm mm-hmm. always loving when I'm seeing someone that is young, that is dealing with the same yeah. trials and struggles like everyone else is dealing with, but still yeah. daily making that decision to say, hey, yes. this is not something I'm doing because my parents are doing that because my parents are pastors I mean by yeah. default because we all because it we will get tested right we will come right. to that point when you know your parents is you know your parents being grounded i should say mm-hmm. in christ is not the same as you being grounded right because That's when right. you're faced yes you can reflect on their teaching and different things but you have to become mature at a certain phase in your life and you have to take what you're doing seriously and then be able to overcome the enemy by learning scripture by learning this knowing when to worship when to praise and like you know in andrew's case when to lift your hands right yeah because you you have to know all that so it's it's amazing so when you guys kind of going down this you know going down this path and it was really important what you said you know kind of reflecting slightly uh elena what you mentioned about serving right yeah. Because I think that is key. If you were to just stick a pin there for a bit, right? It's one thing to want to always be on top. It's one thing to want to be the worship leader, to want to be the lead drummer, to want to be that. But if you're doing it just out of pure servitude, you're serving right. God. I want to do this for your kingdom. I want to do this for you. You know, and a lot of people we've interviewed, they all said, you know, hey, before I even got the number one single, I was doing right. background vocals i was doing this i was just serving and helping others and then as he prepare you in that season then he brings you forward when he feel you're equipped to be able to handle you know what the burden is coming with that so you know kind of jumping back now into your your music now so yeah you you released you know you released unstoppable you know, you're, you, it's out there, it's going, you know, how was that moment when you're not in that phase where you're about to release your first single? Like, t- take us through, how nerve-wracking was that moment? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Unstoppable was, I think, the second, a second single, but we had an older one from 2016. Ah, yeah, this one, Yes. I don't even know, maybe it's not even online anymore, but it's called No One Like You. Okay, and then had an album, okay. We Are Changed, and then was Unstoppable. <laughs> um, yeah. So Unstoppable, though, the song for us, it was really like the first one, because We Are Changed and that album, that was our original album, which mm-hmm. was so beautiful. We love it so much. And it really impacted a lot of people. It was a lot of congregational um, singing on that album. Mm-hmm. And then Unstoppable was the first single from this like new phase of music where we really started to push 
the limits, we also were producing it in our own studio, which was ah, different. Okay. But we had a lot more time to experiment and just to have fun. Um, so that one really, you know, it really rocks. And especially when we do it live, oh. it is just the most amazing thing. <laughs> especially in Berlin, greatest. you know, at the church, it's just, it is wow. so much fun. Um, but it's just the message, really. I think, um, you know, gospel music as a genre um, has morphed so much in the last years from what it used to be, where like gospel now really just means the message is this gospel message. But inside of that, you have so many different variations of, of styling. And so for us, gospel music is really about that message. You know, it's the, it's the religious background, the Christian background, the, the message of Jesus in the message. And so Unstoppable um, is really one of those kind of songs that, you know, with Jesus in your life, you are unstoppable. And um, right, right. it's so important that we that we realize that to walk through, you know, the trials, to walk through the fire, to walk through the storms of life and to come out strong that we can can make it. Um, you know, I just love it. Right. I love it so much. <laughs> you know, and as you as you're speaking about that, too. So you mentioned production, right? So at this phase now, you're doing a lot of, you know, you guys are writing your own music, you're writing, you're singing, and you're also doing your production as well. So tell us now, as a as an independent artist, because unless I miss that step, you're not signed to a label. You guys are still independent, right? To our own label. <laughs> okay, to your own label. Could your own label yes. exactly? So yeah. So as a you know, as an independent, as someone that is you know creating and doing this thing. What message would you now have for someone, you know, that is in your space that is starting? Because a lot of times, you know, I see two types of, you know, uh, independent artists, the ones that are doing everything to gain the, you know, the attention of a label because their goal is just to get signed. I want to be signed. I want to be signed. And then there's the others that are just, you know, they're passionate about it. They're doing, they're learning as much as they can. You know, they're figuring out where they can, you know, observe some of that cost by learning new skills. Like how have you guys, you know, during your journey of starting going down this path, going back to 2016, you know, towards mm -hmm. now, like what were some of the things you would say for someone that is starting now that has helped you along the way? Mm -hmm. Do you want to say something or should I say Ooh. something? <laughs> well, if you have a thought. I do have well, a thought. Okay. You go first. Um, I'll go first. And I have a thought From, too. This is, you know, this is very technically a business perspective, but, um, you know, the honest truth is if you are an artist and um, you can link yourself with someone that's, you know, not, not necessarily from a label or maybe yourself, just go online and learn about business. Um, I just believe that the best representative for you in terms of, you know, representing and also financially can really be yourself because the incomes, the outcomes, everything has to do with you. And if you look at it from a business perspective, you know, giving somebody else a cut of that it, I, you know, it's, it's better to keep it all. And um, yeah. if you have the ability to do that, you don't need a label. And I just really think that in today's world with YouTube and so many different platforms, it is so saturated with music. Um, maybe you think you need a label to, to, you know, get your voice heard through that. But at the end of it all, um, I just really think being independent can have so many more benefits to it to achieve the goals of really having a music career. And I would say financially, it really can be a very good decision to you know, not have to pay royalties to someone else, but to just, uh, <laughs> we're not stingy, you know, and we're not greedy, but really, you know, is, not yeah, to have to yeah. share that, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to reinvest it and use it to build up uh, the next thing for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and my thought is that and of course, it, it could be different for each person, you know, that's mm -hmm. the main thing that I think is that each person yeah. has to do what they believe is, is the right yeah. thing for them. But mm -hmm. for us, especially the fact that, you know, we have this vision, and we have this like, you know, dream in our heart mm -hmm. and, and in our soul, and we want that to come alive, and we want it to to be what it is that we are creating. Mm. And so in that way, it's been really a lot of fun to be able to produce, mm. um, to be able to mix, do all of these things. And, and, you know, of course, it is a real challenge. You know, there have been yeah. times where we were just like, okay, you know, we're going to need more time here. <laughs> like, you know, it, it takes time. But 
to be able to experiment um, and to be able to create, it's just mm. been like another platform to be able to be creative and yeah. to, to make something that we know is inside of us to come out. Um, and that fits to what, to what we are and not, you know, what somebody else wants us to be or to sound like what, you know, what is in line with the trends of the day. And, you know, I think That's so much key. labels and yeah. big companies, there's a pressure to conform. Whereas if you, you know, want to be authentic to you and to be amazing with who God made you to be, I think there's a lot of freedom in, in being able to do it yourself, but you need to push yourself to the industry standards and try to meet that. Um, you know, I think that's really important, the professionalism, excellence, um, but to be able to, to, to make it sound like you. <laughs> yes, yes, there's a in that. it's a great thing. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay. You're there's a freedom there. in that. Yes, yes, there, there, there is a freedom. And, and, and to what you said, you know, because a lot of times when you're thinking, like you said, uh, Andrew, about a label, right? Because their job is to sell records, right? So if something is trending, it might not be quite you, right? It's not on brand with you, but they might want you to go and try this out, do this, do that. And somewhere along the line, you could lose who you are as an artist. And it just becomes, you know, what the next thing is so i think that's that's important and then in terms of keeping it professional i know we were chatting briefly before we got on camera but i mean i love what you guys are doing <laughs> from the professional standpoint from your you know your recording like i was on the live stream with the multiple cameras with the takes that cut <laughs> like, i love good production like i mean there's just something amazing about it really spot on good production and you guys just completely you, you know you you did an amazing job and then going back you know even looking at the last album you know holy fire the production quality you know the artwork everything about that project was just so spot on so thank for you someone that is you know doing it yourselves and so forth you you're just you're setting the model of what that should look like basically so kudos to you guys and <laughs> <laughs> thank you and speaking of holy fire before we even touch on the weather man so that was the last full project you guys released that in 2020 so you know that must have been difficult right because you know again there's lockdowns there's all these various aspects you know with the world that's facing with you know with the pandemic and everyone trying to you know figure all that out but in between that, you guys were able to also still record a project and release it. So how was that experience recording and releasing amongst everything else that was happening? <laughs> you want... Well, you go ahead, brother. brother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for us, it was really like when we found out that there would be a big lockdown and in case the viewers, you know, in the U.S. don't know, Europe is still very much in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, wow. I, I had some okay. friends that were there in New York and they're like, wow, it just seems all so back to normal now. And then they were coming back here and it's like, oh, still in, in lockdown. We've literally oh, wow. just come out okay. of the lockdown um, May, June, but also still very regulated. So when we knew last March, you know, okay, so all this is going to be closed. All this is, we're not going to be able to do any of these things like we usually do. So what are we going to do? <laughs> um, and we had planned to work on a music project sometime last year anyway, but it, with the lockdown, it actually was a big benefit to us personally with time, um, you know, not being able to do regular things. So we had a lot more time to work on it intensely um, to release it faster than what we had planned. Um, so for us, it really was just natural. I think the one thing would have been like, we couldn't have a live concert release, which was, you know, concerts and the live shows is really yeah. the best and most amazing thing. I just love that the most. Um, so that was lacking, but at the same time to bring out something like that, that had um, so many good messages, so many, you know, beautiful songs, people needed to hear that in the middle yes. of all of that. And especially here, in Berlin, our church was very blessed. And um, so it was really fun. I, I wouldn't really say it was challenging to bring it out in that it was it was more just a natural response. But we did say, you know, we told people this wasn't a pandemic album because we had had it planned to do it anyway. But the pandemic helped us to finish sooner than what we had planned 
And it also was a good, um, you know, frame. We did online release with lots of friends from around the world. We also did a stream last year. So very fun, you know, it forced us to think out of the box, which I'm not it's sure good. it's actually good. <laughs> so so the, the title track on that album, right, Holy Fire. So what was the message behind that that you wanted to convey? Like for you personally, like what does Holy Fire mean for you, you know, for your experience, you know, walking with Christ and, you know, what does the singular that project you would see if you were to summarize that to say, hey, this is what we were trying to convey with that project that you set out to convey. What would that be? The first time that I heard the music to this song when Andrew had created it, um, Holy Fire, Holy Fire, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was really touched in my heart and um, had tears in my eyes just from the music itself because it was so beautiful. And when we worked on the song and finished it and like you said it's called mm. holy fire mm. um it is that touching power mm. the holy fire the holy spirit mm. his move in our life and um we talked a little bit about that about the fire of god um and i'm just reminded just maybe not totally on topic <laughs> but i just thought of this um that our dad has this great story <clears throat> Of there was a time when he had a, a vision of a fire, huge, huge consuming fire in front of him. Mm. And it was this sense that he knew he had to just run right in there. Um, and it's an interesting thing, fire, um, because the Lord's fire is a special kind that it doesn't hurt us. It, it does the opposite. It, yeah. it gives us only good things. Um, and it doesn't burn us up. It just lights us up in his glory. Um, yeah, we're yeah. shining. It also makes me think about the story with Moses, um, yes. which was also yeah, an inspiration yeah. for we are changed. Uh, we are changed in the fire of his presence. Mm -hmm. um, we are changed by the fire, his word. So his fire, his mm. holy fire, when it um, sets off in our lives, it's really something. Um, and that's something that we pray for that's yeah. something that we believe yes. for every yes. time we sing even yeah. now just as i'm talking you know um i i want the spirit to speak through me um yeah. i i'd much rather sing any day than, than <laughs> speak <laughs> don't worry you you guys will have the chance to sing a little bit for us towards the end <laughs> yes. but you know but i never want to be ashamed to speak to sing yeah. Yeah. to shout you know to play an instrument to let those melodies speak mm. um and so his fire is so powerful and yeah. i love that in holy fire there's also a part in the bridge where the music is just playing, but yet even at that part, there's a speaking mm. and that's yes. the spirit. And so we want that song to really just inspire us to be yes. filled with his fire, to be filled with his spirit and to not yes. be afraid to ask the Holy spirit because it's three, but they're one father, mm. son, and Holy spirit. Yeah. And so yes. like we receive Jesus and we make that decision to follow him. We also decide to let the Holy spirit live in us and to lead us and guide us yeah. every day which is amazing <laughs> <laughs> yes this is this is true this is true indeed wow that's that's guys you need to go and you need to download holy fire the album is there you know it's the last full album before we jump into the new single weatherman but that album is jam-packed i was listening to it again last night i was playing some of the songs for my wife and i'm like Listen to this one. Listen to that one. <laughs> we're going this, and we're just going back and forth. So I mean, it's a it's a great project. I'm so happy, you know. I came across you guys' music and everything. Like I mean, it's just it's just so amazing because music has a way of telling someone's personal story, but also taking you on that journey with them, right? Like you're feeling it every step of the way, no matter what situation you might be in. Like we could all think about that one song that was kind of the song track to a season in our life, right? That season in our life, like I can go back, I can think in high school when I was in those rebellious days and I'm like, listen, <laughs> <laughs> all these type of music. And then this one point where I wasn't so certain and, you know, and I went through a phase where I listened to like a, a whole bunch of like a, 
Andre Bocelli, like I just lo I love the Italian op opera. Don't ask me why. A lot of people don't know this. I mean, now they're going to know because it's on the recording. We love him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I went through a phase where that's like why I was just listening to and it's like we all know those different phases. So, you know, the fact that you, you know, have that freedom and you release music that, you know, as you're releasing it and you're being led by the spirit to write mm. and to paint and to produce like every step along the way is that, you know, is that process of, Hey, I'm going to release this. Then it's going to bless someone else in that season. And this song that you released now becomes that soundtrack to what they're going through. So that that's an amazing thing. Just, you know, just seeing that song, we're, we're looking at all that. And now, you know, we're here in 2021, you just released Weatherman. Yes, I yes, mean, yes. <laughs> wow. The production quality and the new video is out too for Weatherman, guys. You, you, you got to see the visual. Go ahead, purchase, download, stream <laughs> the single, and then you go watch the visuals. <laughs> I, I have so many questions about the videos. So <laughs> many questions. I mean, from Elena being in like this pit of all these like orange balls. Yes. And then we have the party scene and the confetti scene. And the, it's yeah. just like, man, the vision. Like, explain a bit about the vision, the impact. Like, it's it, that video was just so many great scenes so many like how long did you i guess just starting with just simply how long did it take you to shoot and to put and to like storyboard that whole thing i don't think we counted <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah. filming the filming took place over two two days okay so we did one day all of the outdoor scenes and then another day was everything indoor um, so it was like two full days of filming around 10 to 12 hours, both. And they were back to back days, um, just so that you, you know, were getting it done in two days. Um, but a lot of preparation work before that, the storyboard, I mean, we knew what we wanted to do, but we also like to just look as you go and you see things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was just really, yeah, kind of crazy. And, yeah. And I'm <laughs> so glad that we set out to do the video because, um, I think part of the reason why we just knew it, it had to be a video and we it had, we had all these pictures in our mind like, oh, is mm. because of the song. Yeah, like yes. it, really the song, we just love it so much. And there was this moment when we were working on it and, and Andrew had um, played me the beats. And as soon as I heard the beats, I was just <laughs> like, yes. And I started to move, you know, and it's like, you can't help but move with this beat. And, and that's great because, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's life with God. Um, life with God is like a kaleidoscope of color. Um, there and you go. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and so, like, I didn't even want to start singing over it because I was like, I can't. Like, I just have to listen to the beat. Um, but we started singing melodies over it. Um, and then when this, you know, idea, Weatherman. Yeah, it was came. really funny because we we didn't know. Like, we what we did for this one, how we wrote mm -hmm. the text was we just, like, listed off a whole bunch of words. Yeah. That we mm -hmm. thought were really like cool words like these sound really neat so we didn't have um like a message yeah. or a theme yeah, that we was right sure. there from the beginning we just started like going through words that we know that like these words just you know how they sound it's really like popping kind of words and then at one point either you i don't even remember who said it but somebody just said like what weatherman like what about that word and and then we started thinking yeah like weatherman and then then it was from there, like, okay, so what yeah. What can weatherman actually mean, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of like, okay, a gospel song, what, what is a weatherman? And then I think you mm -hmm. were the one that said, well, what does the weatherman do? Yeah. Like he mm -hmm. tells you what the day is gonna be like, he tells you all these things. And so many people rely on the weatherman to, yes. to tell them you got, make sure you dress in that today and it's gonna be cloudy today or it's gonna be a sunny day. And it's like, yeah. we wake mm -hmm. up and we look mm -hmm. on the phone and then, we right. realize like the weatherman as a figure, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, in our life is, is really something. And it's not just the weatherman, but it's any kind of person or voice or media or, you know, Hollywood, whatever it is. It's like, we, yeah. we take these things that are coming toward us and we allow them to tell us who we are, what kind of day mm -hmm. we're going to have. And, and that's really not right. You know, it has to be not from, 
from those kind of voices, but God's voice in our life. Yes. Not the weatherman, but God's voice. And with God, every day is a sunny day. So it really was right. just so much fun. <laughs> You know, even when it's cloudy, you can yes. try to be positive even on a cloudy day and, you know, get up out of bed and get moving and, mm. and do your calling. And um, there's really, you right. could, could preach it, you know? <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm and ready. I'm ready. Shot of Andrew holding an umbrella and like the rain is coming down. And, and then there's this line, you know, as far as I can tell, it's going to be magnificent. Well, like the rain yeah, just... And the rain is coming down. And see, I love that because like, that's the faith. Yeah. You know, yes. is that yes. we prophesy and we speak things. And even when it seems like we can't see it, mm, right. we know the truth and we know who our God is. And we know yeah. that he's, I mean, and it's like, if you think about just all the great gifts that he's given us, mm -hmm. yeah. like we can walk in complete forgiveness. You know, we don't have to hold on to things like you can, you can really be happy every yeah. day when, uh -huh. when you're walking. And, um, and so yeah. we really love the whole idea of the song. And we, we started laughing once and we like got this idea. <laughs> we know it's like, good when we just start laughing randomly. Right. Like, when yeah. we're writing a song and we start laughing, we know like, this is great. This is it. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And, that, and that's such a powerful messaging. Cause again, even when you're listening to a song, you're looking at the song title is you know you guys just explained it perfectly right of thinking about the weatherman and how because yeah and that's so true sometimes we do things without even stopping and think because when you get up you're like ah oh, what is the weather going to be today sometimes you're checking the weather app before you even read your bible before yeah. you do this before you do that it's like <laughs> oh man what am i gonna hire what am i gonna do what am i gonna do that and it's just like it's so influential without you even noticing it right yeah when you get those alerts that come in on your phone oh weather forecast right. storm this is gonna happen like it's just it's such a pivotal part of your day so it's amazing right. that you know for the way in which you you just articulated that so that that's awesome so the song weatherman is out all social platforms all yes. digital platforms it is there it is out and i have to keep talking about the visuals like <laughs> tell me what is and i'll start with you elena what was your favorite scene <laughs> In, um, in the video because I, I have so many favorite scenes, but you tell me what's, <laughs> your, what's yours. Yeah, well, I think what I'll do is I'll just change that up to, yeah, favorite scenes with an S, like plural, because <laughs> there, there it's really go. hard. There we go, there we go. It's one. hard, it's um, hard. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. And so like the first I would say was um, mm. sitting in the car because we rented for the day this fabulous car with red interior and it was just oh, the most yeah. fabulous automobile ever. <laughs> and so just being sitting That's a good in that old fashioned you know, word. Automobile. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and it was cool because we got to talk with some people, like someone rode up on their bike and they were like, wow, cool car. And we were like, hi. And yeah, that was we, the funny. Yeah, we do music. On the bike and we're like, we do music. Where are you from? He's like, we're from Atlanta, Georgia. We're like, what? <laughs> Berlin. <laughs> really? You hear this a lot. But that was great. And other people were like, nice car. And we were waving. And it was just like really, really cool. But just sitting in that car was really some experience. But now, of course, I mm. I must say that um, being in the ball pit was another <laughs> one of my favorites. Yeah. It was so fun. That was, that was epic. That was epic. <laughs> It was so fun. It was just great, you know, and um, it's it's fun to be able to do things that really are fun while you're filming, because even though it's stressful and, you know, you've got a schedule and you mm. want to get this done, it was so much fun. You know, it was a blast. Yeah. What, what about <laughs> you, Andrew, or some of your favorite scenes? With oh, this? my. I think they're all so fun. But um, there's one that I really like, because when you watch the video, it's everything um logical at the beginning so it's like you know it's a little eccentric and you get a little like okay this is going to be a little eccentric but then suddenly you'll see a scene where i'm in a disco ball like room alone and then you're like looking like wait a minute what just happened and then she kind of laughs in the car <laughs> and i really think that like disco ball room scene um was so fun i just i just you know the disco balls and like the streamers and everything it was and the way we placed it, I think that was just really fun. That that was the first like shot of this something else is coming. Um, it was yeah, it's just so fun. <laughs> See, for me, I would and, and that was an amazing scene as well too. Uh, I, I I love old fashioned cars. Like I would be going down the street, I see an old fashioned car, and I have to stop. I have to look. <laughs> when I saw that car, I was like, oh man, this is just amazing. Great yeah. car 
great scene that I love the dancing scene and just even the other part like I said with with Elaine's scene as well too you know when when in the in in the ball case and that and I'm, it's just like creatively you guys definitely hit the mark whatever you set out for with that just as someone consuming it from my end it was such an experience to look at the video to kind of go through the scene just seeing the song relived in visual form it mm. was just it was amazing it was quite an experience it was almost like <laughs> oh. looking at a movie and you're seeing all of this different you know i can tell the hard work you guys put into it it was it was awesome that's all i can say well, it, that's it, it was epic. it was epic. <laughs> great 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 so you know i know we're almost towards the top of the hour but um andrew this one is for you right East okay. meets West, you know, yes. talk to us about that. You have a YouTube channel, you're doing a show and you're doing that with your wife, correct? That's right. So um, this was actually also part of the productions that we did mm -hmm. last year. And, you know, the church wasn't able to meet. And actually, um, my mom, we found out that my mom had breast cancer oh, in wow. August of last year, mm -hmm. which was quite a big shock um, for us. They found a tumor and it was a very aggressive breast cancer. And, you know, the, like, as we were thinking about the Sunday online channel and the church, and it's like, how do we, this story, because she was believing for healing and we thank yeah. God she has been healed through that. That's amazing. really a testimony. It's really wow, amazing. So nice. okay, but yeah. rather thank than God. making every Sunday about, you know, the, the testimonies and things that God's doing in, in my life, in my mom's life, in my family, how could we show our life to people in a way where then when we are preaching, when we are speaking, when we're doing our ministry, they have a history and a background of who we are and what kind of people we are. And that was really like the, the starting um, mentality for wanting to do the show. So then we thought, so I talked with my wife. So my wife is uh, from Hong Kong and we met here in Germany, we have a son, he's five years old, uh, awesome. going to be six pretty soon. Wow. So we decided, okay, let's make the main characters, me and my wife, and then have that be the frame where we can tell all these other stories about my mom, about uh, the music we do, and to present that to the world. And so we made a reality show, you know, it's all awesome. real, awesome. it's good old reality TV, American style, and um <laughs> It's just was so fun. So we actually did a season two in this year and just to tell stories, um, you yeah. know, about our life, some of the things that happened in my life and my wife's, uh, my wife's life, because Elena and I, with our music, we are so prominent in, in the ministry and also people know us very well, but we mm -hmm. also wanted a chance to share, you know, me and my wife and our story and what God's yeah. doing in my marriage and with my child and to allow that to come to the forefront too. So it was just a, really fun and we enjoy uh making that also oh, oh yes yes and i and i enjoy i'm still i'm still catching up i'm a little bit behind on the season <laughs> but i've seen a few episodes L love the bubble tea episode i mean <laughs> i've only tried bubble tea like <laughs> once or twice but like i tr i went checking uber eats some checking all over i'm like i wanted to get some <laughs> bubble tea for this show like i i tried i didn't i didn't get any but i oh, man. i tried <laughs> And speaking of bubble tea, you guys had a meetup. That was today, right? What time is it? Yes, that was today. So how was that meetup? And talk to us a little bit about that. Like, what was that experience like? Oh, it was just so great. Um, a lot of people came out, which was really nice. Um, we were able to just celebrate this song. And it was also cool because we were able to have everybody listen to the song and, and see the video. So when we came together, we oh, just got nice. to talk about it. And oh, when did you nice, see this part? Nice. And, and um, some people were there who were also in the video, mm. um, which was just so cool. And so we got to just kind of, yeah, laugh. And um, we had the, the instrumental version playing for us on the street. So we were just drinking bubble tea and taking pictures <laughs> and, and talking about the song. And um, some people came that surprised me, which was also really cool. Oh, wow. And um, it was really, really fun. And, 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 so signing, and signing autographs as well, because I oh, saw yeah. the autograph thing as well. You know, I'm, I'm gonna need my mail, so I'll have to inbox <laughs> you guys my mailing okay. address. I'm gonna need it signed and mailed to me, so I'm just I'm just letting you know. <laughs> okay, you got it. You we'll got it. Sure, sure. <laughs> so again, you know, 
weatherman is out everywhere right now, guys. So I need you to go download the song, stream the song, check out, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I mean, they're doing amazing things. They're doing it with such passion, with such liveliness. You know, they're telling the story of Christ. They're telling their personal stories, personal testimony. And it's just such an amazing way that they're launching out and doing it. So go support them along, go alongside them. You know, if you're in Berlin, definitely check out the church, you know, Berlin church, check it out. Go fellowship with them. They're doing such great things. Check out the app project. You know, if you go to Spotify, you're going to see other music that they have released. Go ahead and check that out as well too. And, you know, no pressure at all. But if you guys want to sing a little bit before you drop your social handles and we <laughs> rap, feel free, sing whatever, anything, you know, Elena, if you want to bring out the brass and you want to start playing whatever you want to do, <laughs> this is Where's your time. Where's my trombone? Where's my trombone? Where's the trombone? <laughs> Go tune it up oh. or whatever. <laughs> we could sing. Yeah. What should we sing? We could sing a little something. Well, the, the pre-chorus maybe. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. I just need to recognize God makes the cloudy days into sunny days. Keep moving on, keep keeping on. I just need to remind myself it's who I am, it's who you are. I can be who I'm meant to be. <laughs> love it, love it. You <laughs> bet. <laughs> Listen, guys, go, go, go. You see, I'm excited because I've been following what's been happening from the stream to everything else. So trust me, guys, once you go and you check it out, you will be equally excited as me. Don't just look at how excited I am. You can be excited too. Go, go look at the video. That's all I'm going to say. And Elena, Andrew, thank you so much for hanging with me today. Tell everyone, where can they follow you? How can they stay tuned? How can they just know what's going on in your life? So you can look us up at Andrew and Elena Mack. You type that anywhere. You will find us on Instagram, YouTube, Andrew and Elena Mack. And we would send us a message if you saw this today, this interview. Write us like, hey, I saw you on Gospel Music Buzz. And we will just be so glad to write you back and to get to know you wherever you are in the world. And if you're in Berlin, please stop by, come say hello. We will be oh, so yeah. glad to see you. We have a VIP seat just for you. <laughs> and uh, just can't wait to see you. Awesome. Elena, do you have anything else you want to plug as well too? Well, just thank you so much for speaking with us today. We want you to know it's also a great joy for us to get to know you. And um, we thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, we just we just made history here on Gospel Music Bar. Yes. First interview with Europe, with Berlin. You know, we, we thank you so much for coming on. You guys are doing amazing thing. Definitely, you know, be encouraged. Keep doing what you're doing. You know, you are reaching okay. the audience base. You are reaching the souls. You guys, you know, you're building a church. You're doing so much. Like, this is exactly what we're called to do as believer is to share our faith, is to plant churches, is to shepherd others. And you guys are walking, you're living in your calling. It's just so fulfilling to see what you're doing. And best believe it, if I'm ever in Germany, I'm looking you up, all right? I'm coming for that <laughs> VIP seat. <laughs> yeah, thank you so thank, much. Thank you so much, I appreciate you guys. Again, this is Sherwin with Gospel Music Buzz. Andrew and Elena, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you.